Hey y'all, I'm glad you're here. I'm Miss Katie with Heritage Ways. And I have shared with you a little bit, actually I think I have three videos on our channel right now uh, about our favorite ice cream maker. Um, I have one video sharing a good healthy raw ice cream and um, two videos talking about what we like about this particular ice cream maker after doing a lot of research years ago. It is really an heirloom maker. We love it so much. It's a memory making machine. Well, today I thought I'd do something fun with y'all. Um, thanks to Tuscarora Valley Farmers Market and Layman's, we are here today sharing uh, a recipe, blueberry lemonade ice cream. And we are making it here today for the folks at the market. And I'm gonna teach a class and kind of <clears throat> tell them a little bit about the Emmergood ice cream maker. And then we're gonna see their reaction to the ice cream. So I hope you'll join this fun little video, a little bit different, but I hope you'll come along. I wish you were here. I wish you were here to taste the blueberry lemonade ice cream, hand crank the old fashioned way. So this isn't your, I, I don't consider this like your typical ice cream. You know, you're not using actual milk because you're using cream and half and half. The recipe that I'm giving you on your paper is the single recipe and it makes two and a half quarts. And what we did today is doubled it. All right, that's kind of, um, and who's willing to try this today? I'm <laughs> Are you? Okay, all right. Well, ice cream uh, making for, you know, I call that, I call any ice cream maker a memory making machine because y'all, I, I wrote in a blog, it's gonna come out July 11th, which is what next Tuesday or when, next week. It's gonna come out on the layman's um, website, my blog. And I write all about my memories and uh, from the 60s and 70s at my grandparents' house and my parents' house making hand crank ice cream. Uh, I think hand crank machines were the norm then, don't you, Mr. Patient? Because, you know, not so much electric. I mean, they had them, of course, but not so much. Anyway, um, so to make homemade ice cream, we would need your machine. And nowadays, you know, they even have, uh, you know, fancy, dancy. In the past, uh, I know that, of course, we didn't have crushed ice and, and that sort of thing. And I have Amish friends now. We've taken this to my Amish friend's house, remember? When we went for a social and uh, we made ice cream. And a lot of times, I, I, and my Amish friends that I'm talking about, they make it in the winter time because they go out and cut the ice and put it in their ice houses. And that's when they have ice. And that was true for all of us. I even remember, I was a little, little girl, but I remember, um, when my grandfather would take me to the ice house in Columbia, Tennessee, and we would get ice. Do you remember that? Yep. Okay. Um, my grandparents lived in the same town as his parents, so we would go and get the ice. Do y'all remember that? Or did anybody do that? Or you're looking at me like, you know, well, we would go to the ice house and we would get blocks of ice and we would break it off and that's how we would make ice cream or put it in the cooler for our drinks or whatever. So. Um, but now we have crushed ice and we can make ice cream year round. But um, it might be interesting to know that a lot of times this was a winter food, a, a thing to make in the winter. Got today's recipe written on the paper here. So you can take that home with you. Remember, we're doubling that today. They do make an electric model. We, we can do that. So we got the hand crank. And uh, one of the things I like about it is Remember the ones you had as a kid? They were metal and they were all rusted. Okay, this is all stainless steel. The gears and everything are stainless steel. And Clarence, we were outside talking a while ago, and when you and when you're cranking this thing, you can basically do one finger. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, it's I mean, such, see that? It really is. A, I mean, it's it's really it's built well to where that the gears are meshing together like they should. So that, that was a real big selling point for me was the stainless steel because that tells me, you know what, it's gonna last forever. It's gonna be a heritage item that I can pass down to my kids if they want. So then you get into this, the canister. I think most of them do, but I like the clear lid because 
I don't know if you're if you were watching, but as I was churning, I kept wiping the the salt and ice off so I could see in there to see how I'm progressing. You can really tell it with the feel, but you can look in there and see it too. So I, I like that about it. The lid. So the, there's this little piece right here and the lid hits on that and the canister is turning, right? And then the beater is turning this way to scrape the sides and this piece is turning in opposite direction. So you got three-way movement and what it's doing is it's gonna make for a creamier ice cream because you're not getting clumps left in there that's not moving. So everything inside the, inside the canister is moving. So I like that about it. It's a blow molded outer shell, but then they put that uh, expanding foam insulation inside of the walls so that it helps insulate it to keep the cold in. As you're doing this, you put the ice in and you put the salt in, eight part ice to one part salt. But what I do is I just fill it up a third of the way and then I put some salt around. And then I fill it up a third of the way, put some salt around. And, uh, so what happens is, is that salt is helping melt the ice, but also making the ice colder. It's making a, uh, it's making a, a, a salt water slurry in the bottom that helps get it colder. Because what you're having to do for it to freeze, you're having to get it to below 32 degrees. And you've got to put the right amount of salt so that you get that melt, so that you get that extra cold. So what it's doing is, as, as the canister is getting cold, it's freezing on the inside of the canister and the beater is scraping it off the canister. Do y'all have any questions about all that? Yes, ma'am. What's the name of it? It's Good. It's Good. What's that mean? It means. Come on, do it. It's good. Always good. Always good. I knew that and I forgot. Yeah, oh, you didn't mention Maine USA. That's a biggie with us. Well, he said he told us where it was made in Pennsylvania. Well, where it's sold, <coughs> it's sales, but well, it's, sold. I think it's yeah, made okay. in Pennsylvania okay. too. The lid, um, the lid is made in Fredericksburg. Oh, really? Oh, is it? My dad makes the lid. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, look, shop Sears. Yeah. I am huge on shop local and shop small and shop. Okay, I'll, I'll stop talking. So you gotta have a stick to tamp it down. Because that's what he, he forgot well, his tamper downer. And, and our friend Dan, our, our Amish friend Dan, taught me that. Because what happens is, as the ice is melting, it's making that slurry in the bottom. But what can happen is, it'll stay hovered above that slurry. So if you tamp it down, and it'll leave air pockets. So you'll tamp it down to keep pushing your ice down. Sir, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you're familiar with the craftsmanship. Is there something that we have left out for? There's, there's one thing in tapping that I would do more than what he does, and that is I would try to get the salt that's on the bottom and mix it with the ice more when we make it. I have a spoke off of a buggy wheel. It's about that big around and about that long. And I would take that all the way to the bottom and then move it around oh. and then do it again. Okay. And try to stir it more and have more coldness through the hole. Okay. okay. So you try to get all the way to the bottom. I, I do. Oh, okay. not just tamp it down. Do okay. you add water? Because I know some people add water. Do you add what, up to a quart or how much uh, water? For ice, we would add about a cup. And for snow, it would be half that. Oh, okay. Um, do you <coughs> eat it in the winter mostly or the summer? Anytime. Anytime. We, we, we collect ice and keep ice all summer long. Well, and that's what our friends so do we too. Can make, we can make ice cream anytime now. Well, you need to be turning. <laughs> it's going to get froze to the side Actually, and you're not going to be able to turn it. You know what? <laughs> I broke that handle off already. Uh, not, not from a never good, from a white mountain. I, broke I didn't hear what you said, I'm sorry. I broke a handle off. Oh. From a white mountain because I stopped too long. Mm -hmm. And it froze well, to the side. Now, a never good handle, I don't know, I never broke one of those. Off. This is his expertise. Oh, yeah. Oh, snow. No ice at all, just snow? Or, okay. 
Well, snow, uh, salt. Salt and snow? Yeah. We, would, we would actually use uh, animal salt. Okay. Like curing salt? That's very interesting, the rock salt. I never heard that before. Well, okay. What, what is animal salt? I mean, I cure my own bacon, but I don't know Not what you're... Not as fine as table salt not as coarse as rock salt. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, where do you get that around here? Elevators. Oh, okay. Elevators, drive throughs Right, okay. Now this is delicious. Is it? Thank you. So you said I'm talking about, about how the blueberries are frozen? Yeah. Good. I think oh, it would be better to have point. half of it pureed. <laughs> Don't you? Uh, these, are, these are good, but it, it is that way also. Yeah. Yeah, don't be shy. Seriously, we need this heat. Let's see. Try to do it the way I don't get it all over here. Thank you. It's good. Very good. It's delicious. Do you like yes. it? Yes, very delicious. I think that if the berries were chopped up, it would be better. If they were chopped up? Mm -hmm. Okay. They are um, frozen. Frozen. That's right. Did any of them break up in there? No. Or? No. no, I don't no. think any. What do you think? Do you like the lemonade, they, uh, the tankiness? Yes. yes. Yeah. I That's do too. what I do like because it's not. It's so sweet. Uh, years ago, my mother made a lemon mousse, and that flavor reminds me of that. It's just light, yeah. light and lemony. Yeah. So good, good. What about y'all? Do you like it? Wonderful. Okay. Good. Good. Did you get uh, seconds? Mm -hmm. I hope everybody got seconds and mm -hmm. thirds. And did you like it? Oh, it's delicious. Okay, good. Are you just saying that, or do you like it for real? No, I like it. Okay, <laughs> it, it beats the stuff that you buy at the store. Oh, that can't absolutely. Even say we can ice pronounce cream. this these ingredients. I thought it was very good. Okay, at first all right. I thought it was a little bit too tart. Okay. But then I remembered that the lemonade was in lemonade. It, so that's where the flavor came from, and very creamy, a lot creamier than I've ever made. It is creamy. Yeah. It is creamy. And you can leave the lemonade out. Yeah, you know, you Very can, good. Good. Nice and creamy. Good. Smooth and delicious. Smooth. I love having the blueberries. I'd like to have them chopped, though. I, I think pieces. I would, too. Because it's almost like getting a little ice cube. It is. It's, it's hard very, on the teeth if you have sensitive good. teeth, like I do. But um, you could easily just puree those and, and put it in sure. there. And it would still be fine. Mm -hmm. Very so, smooth. Did y'all think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't care for the frozen berries. Okay, I think that's the consensus to, to puree the berries. It's nice having but the berries in it though. It is, but I think we could just puree them and they'll be fine. I think so. Too. I think so, it's with raspberries or strawberries. Maybe oh, I think this is very good and I love the blueberries whole. Some people did not. Oh, okay. And I was telling your husband that the, the White Mountain, it would sink to the bottom. Oh, that's true. And the beading would take the skins off. So I prefer this consistency. Oh, I think I, you're right. You're I love point. the lemonade and the blueberries. So we're going to call this a Blue Arnold. Blue Arnold, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, y'all, I want to tell you that was a great class that we had. I enjoyed teaching it. So thanks to Layman's and the Farmer's Market for having me. But I think one of the most unexpected surprises was that we did have the Amish gentleman, Jonas Yoder, uh, in there uh, from Yoder's Produce Stand. And he was there, and he, I actually asked him if he had anything to add because I felt like he might um, have had something to add. And he said yes. His dad, uh, his father actually works in the place that makes the lids um, for the Emmer Good. So, actually, Mr. Patient talked to this gentleman, the older gentleman who makes the lids, and here's what he said. Mr. Yoder Sr., that actually makes the lids, he makes those lids at a factory, at a plastics factory in Fredericksburg, Ohio. And he went on to tell me that also the crank mechanism, at least for the hand crank, is made at a machine shop there in Fredericksburg, Ohio as well. The uh, stainless steel canister and the outer bucket, the green bucket, are made at a factory in Pennsylvania. So the thing is 100% totally USA made, made in USA, but several of the pieces are actually made in Fredericksburg, Ohio, um, which is not, uh, probably maybe 30 minutes from uh, the Layman store in Kidron.